okay now welcome to the second part of probability uh, probability theory so in this part we will be discussing about the classical definition i hope you have gone through the first video where we have discussed the uh, important terminologies that is connected with the probability theory so today we will be dealing with the definition of probability uh, that is the classic definition of probability, then the limitations of classical definitions, limits of probability of an event, and the final segment will be probability of the complement of an event. Now, the definition uh, of classic, uh, the definition of probability, that is the classical definition of probability, I would like to explain it with the help of an example. So here, I would consider um, the coin tossing experiment. Let a be the event and um, um, and a let a be the event of getting a head now a uh, so i'm defining a as getting a head now here small m denote the number of favorable cases small n denote the number of total cases just forget all these things but this is mandatory but for the ease of uh, speaking i would say n be the total number of cases now in this experiment so as you know if i flip a head i can uh, the event of getting a head is like the favorable cases that is uh, small m will be one because if you flip a head, uh, sorry, if you flip a coin, you will get either a head or a tail. So in the case of this experiment, since A is the event of getting a head, Rm is 1. And the total number of case, which is denoted by small n, is again 2. So here, if you divide the total number of favorable cases by small n, you will get the answer 1 by 2. Therefore, the probability of getting a head is clearly 1 by 2. Now, if you want to mathematically represent it, so the mathematical representation of the probability of getting an event, uh, getting a head when you flip a coin uh, will be, the, the general formula will be written as capital P of A. So uh, if uh, P is denoted in capital letters, P of A is equal to small m by n. Or in this case, P of A is equal to 1 by 2. Okay, so next... Next, I will speak about the definition. Now, you, what you have to do is, after this, you have to compare your definition with the example that I have given earlier. So, now, the definition, that is the classical definition for probability is, if an event A can happen in M cases out of total of N exhaustive, mutually likely and equally likely cases, then the probability of A is defined by p of a is equal to m by n now here m is denote the total number of favorable cases and small n denote the total number of exhaustive mutually likely and equally likely cases so that is the classical definition of probability now we have certain limitations for this classical definition and hence we have two other definitions which we will discuss in the next video so the limitations of classical definitions are whenever the total number of cases cannot be considered equally likely this definition fades so for understanding this limitation First of all, you should know what equally likely event is, which I have given in the, uh, explained very clearly in the first video that you can go and look up to. And the second limitation is when the total number of possible outcomes that is small n, when it becomes infinite or countably infinite, this definition fails. So these are the two cases when uh, the classical definition of probability fails. So these are the two limitations. Now, we have to uh, check what are the limits of probability of an event. So, for checking uh, the limits of probability of an event, first we can consider a random experiment. So, again, what is a random experiment? That I have again given uh, the description, detailed description in the first video. So, whenever you consider a random experiment or or whatever experiment it may be, uh, there certainly will be an event. So here I am defining capital A to be the event and small m be the number of favorable cases, small n be the total number of cases. 
so the least value so we have to find a lower limit for probability of an event and an upper limit for the probability of an event so in the case of lower limit uh, the least value of m can take the value zero that is when the event is a null event so when there is no event when uh, when it is a null event uh, i mean when the, it, it's not like when there is no event but when the event is a null event so the answer if m is zero so if there are no favorable cases and the second is when uh, the upper uh, limit that we have to find is the second case that is when the maximum value of m can take its value as small n that is when the event is sure or certain okay so let's move on to the first case when m is equal to 0 we get p of a that is probability of the event a is equal to 0 divided by n is 0 so that means we have got the lower limit as 0 and when m is equal to n we get p of a is equal to m by n which is equal to n by n that is equal to 1 which means we get the upper limit so therefore hence the probability of an event should lie between 0 and 1 both inclusive okay that is mathematically we can write it as 0 less than or equal to p of a less than or equal to 1 so that uh, that is the limit of probability of an event so next uh, the probability of the complement of an event so again here I am considering a random experiment now let a be the event let a complement if a is the event then a complement uh, is the complement of the event of a okay so uh, to explain it more if m be the number of favorable cases to event a and then is the total number of cases then there will be n minus m outcomes which are favorable to the event a complement okay so again uh, we have to find out our, our uh, objective is to find out what is the probability of the complement of an event that is what is the probability that is the what is p of a complement so p of a complement is equal to number of favorable cases in this case it is a complement so the number of favorable cases is n minus m divided by the total number of cases n is equal to 1 minus m by n which is equal to simple mathematics okay which is equal to what 1 minus m by n I hope you already know the classical definition of probability and that is equal to p of a which implies that p of a complement is equal to 1 minus p of a or p of a is equal to 1 minus p of a complement or you can write like this p of a plus p of a complement is equal to 1 okay I hope you understood the uh, classical definition of uh, probability and the limitations and the two other things that is uh, the limits of probability and of course the probability of the complement of event that is the relationship between uh, the probability of an event and the probability of the complement of that particular event so that's all for now and uh, stay tuned for our next video thank you